All right, so now I want to talk about the molecular shapes of larger molecules. So in the case of a large molecule, such as uh, this one here, uh, this is the chemical formula for a compound that we call acetic acid. So in the case of acetic acid, uh, what is the molecular geometry? How do we describe the relative arrangement of the atoms within a larger molecule such as acetic acid? So just like doing the molecular shape of any small molecule, uh, the first step in figuring out the shape is to draw the Lewis structure of the molecule. So let's do that. Okay, now if you're not quite sure how I did that, uh, I'm not really going to go into the nuts and bolts of how to draw Lewis structures in this video. Um, I do have videos on how to draw Lewis structures, uh, so if you're rusty on it or you didn't know what I was doing here, um, feel free to check those out in my Lewis theory playlist. But uh, yeah, just it's kind of a doing Lewis structures is kind of a prereq for doing molecular shapes. So this background knowledge is sort of understood already. So anyway, this is the correct Lewis structure for acetic acid. So now it comes down to uh, molecular shape. So what is the shape? Well, it turns out there's really no single shape that's going to describe this whole molecule. Uh, the reason why is because we have more than one central atom. And you may be asking yourself, well, if we have more than one central atom, well, what's so central about it? And the answer is, well, uh, in the context of molecular shapes, a central atom is simply an atom that has two or more atoms bonded to it. So by definition, yes, we have more than one central atom in this molecule. So let's find out what our central atoms are. So this one's definitely a central atom because it has four electron groups on it. This carbon here is also a central atom because it has three electron groups on it. And this oxygen is also a central atom because it has four electron groups on it, two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. So we have three central atoms in this molecule. So let's see if we can't draw the entire molecule. Now generally, what I like to do when I draw these uh, larger molecules is I like to draw the longest chain of atoms in the plane of the board. So this chain of atoms here, from this hydrogen all the way to this hydrogen, I'm going to try to put that in the plane of the board. So if we look at our first central atom, that's this carbon here. I'm just going to go left to right. This central atom has four electron groups on it. Vesper theory tells us that any central atom with four electron groups is going to have a tetrahedral shape. So let's draw that tetrahedral shape. I have my carbon in this in the center. And then I'm going to keep the hydrogen and the carbon in the plane of the board. So I'm going to put those here and here. The other two hydrogens, well this thing's a tetrahedron, so uh, one of the hydrogens is going to have to come out in front of the board. And one of them is going to have to go behind the board. So that takes care of this first central atom. So let's move on to the next central atom. Well, this has uh, three electron groups on it, so that's going to uh, that's going to mean that means that uh, this is going to have a trigonal planar shape around it. And again, I'd like to keep this oxygen in the plane of the board because I'm trying to keep the longest chain of atoms in the plane of the board. So I'm going to put the oxygen here, the singly bonded oxygen that is, and I'm going to put the carbonyl group or the doubly bonded oxygen 
up here. Okay, so that takes care of that central atom. Uh, the only one left is the oxygen here. The oxygen has four electron groups around it, so that would give rise to a tetrahedral electron geometry, of course. But two of those electron groups are lone pairs, so I'm just going to draw them in as lone pairs. And this is a bent shape, or a bent molecular geometry. Okay, so there you have it. There are three central atoms and there are three geometries. So, uh, let's see. Uh, in terms of bond angles, give myself a little bit more room here. In terms of bond angles, uh, let's see. Uh, the bond angle between these two would be approximately 109, but probably less than that because these lone pairs have a tendency to push back on that bond angle. So this is going to be less than 109 degrees. Uh, moving on to the other central atom, uh, this angle is going to be about the same as this angle. Is going to be about the same as this angle. Those are all going to be approximately 120 degrees. There might be some slight deviations for that uh, from that from those values just because this thing isn't really symmetrical, this group is different from this group and so forth. And then what's remaining is all these other angles which are approximately 109.5 and again because this thing's not symmetrical those values could be above or below 109.5. So that I'm talking about this angle this angle, uh, this angle, that angle, and that angle. That whole mess. Those are all about 109.5. So uh, there you have it. There is uh, how to draw a larger molecule such as acetic acid. And uh, I hope this was helpful. All right.